You might want to know a bit more about what's happening behind the scenes. So let's start with the SDA and ACI integration. At this point, the integration is happening through Identity Services Engine, or ICE, and this is how APIC and DNA Center will exchange EPGs and scalable groups respectively, allowing both campus and data center network admins to define and apply policy consistently. In our scenario, we currently have a desktop assigned to the employee's SG, and which needs secure network connectivity to an application within our ACI network, which is currently assigned to EPG192. The campus is already connected to the SD1. Now, we will do exactly the same for ACI, and we will also integrate it to ICE. We currently have no connectivity from the desktop to the application server, as you can see, which currently has the 192, 168, 100, 200 IP, as you can see. The first thing we'll do is create an L3 out EPG running OSPF in order to have connectivity to the SD1 router. In this case, I just have to assign the IP address to the port I will use, which will be a sub-interface using VLAN 10, in order to classify traffic easily once it gets to the SD1 router. As you can now see, we have no external EPGs or prefixes assigned, nor learned through this connection yet, since this is exactly what we want this integration to do for us. So, let's now go to ICE and specify the AP credentials and details. We'll also assign the specific tenant an L3 out we just created, so that ICE can go and export all scalable groups in there. This way, all the SGs from DNA Center will be shared to ACI. Last, we will check the TrustSec ACI Exchange option and we'll hit Save. Once that happens, we can now see all SGs successfully imported into ACI as an L3 external EPG. Therefore, we can simply go to our ACI application profile, pick the employee's external EPG, assign a contract to it so that it can communicate with EPG192, which is where our application is living in, and then hit Submit. We now have communication and a common policy model for both the campus and the data center, which are exchanging SGs and EPGs from one domain to the other. You can also see that the IP address from the desktop was automatically learned by ACI as part of this integration process through its external EPG. There are more integrations coming very soon for SDA and APIC, as well as multi-site orchestrator, which will allow you to take intent-based networking to the next level. So stay tuned. Then, if we take a deeper look into ACI and SD1 integration, we mentioned that the main objective is to warranty the SLA for our applications once they leave the data center network on ACI and as they traverse the SD1. Let's start on APIC, where you can see that there is a section called 1SLA with some default values for different SLA classes. Both APIC and vManage are already integrated in this case, and if we adjust any values for these SLA classes on vManage, for example, let's set the acceptable jitter to 99 milliseconds instead of 100, those new values will be automatically synced up on APIC as you can see. As you remember, we already have communication between the desktop and the app through ACI and DNA Center integration. However, it would be better to apply an SLA policy in order to warranty communication performance. At this moment, vManage has no prefixes related to the transactional data class, and if we log into the ISR router, we can now also see the same at the policy level. No prefixes at all. So the configuration right now is empty for this specific transactional data class. We may want to use this one for specific treatment on our traffic from campus to the data center. So let's now go back to APIC, and if you remember, we had created a contract to allow communication between the desktop and the application called Campus Talk. We will modify it, assigning a quality of service priority, and then an SLA policy, which was imported from vManage using that transactional data class, which includes a maximum acceptable jitter of 99 milliseconds, as you may remember. If we go back to vManage, we have now automatically assigned the corresponding prefixes from ACI right into its corresponding class. We can verify such prefixes match the ones visible at the EPG level by going to the APIC, and then we can also check that those same prefixes are also available at the router level, belonging now to the VPN and a specific SLA policy we just defined. Just as with SDA and ACI, there are more integrations coming for ACI and SD1 in the near future, which will further increase functionality for branch and even cloud deployments. 
Remember that security is not only about consistent policy, but also about encryption. And ACI provides it at line rate speeds, either within the data center using MacSec or amongst data centers using CloudSec. Even if you're using cloud environments with Cloud ACI, encryption is also enabled by default using software-based IPsec. So this means you can run end-to-end -end encryption for your data center anywhere, and you may also extend such encryption to the one and the campus as well using Cisco SD-1 and SDA technologies. There are many more features and solutions that you can leverage as part of the Cisco Data Center Anywhere architecture, including policy normalization through our partners like AlgoSec and Tuffin, as well as SD-1 extension, which natively integrates to edge computing solutions like Hyperflex. In this section, we covered how we can minimize downtime by providing security consistently, using a layered approach and providing better visibility, policy, encryption, and threat protection, no matter where your digital business runs. We first learned about SecureX, which provides you with a central view for all your security products, as well as Tetration, which not only allows you to enable zero trust and define policy based on your existing environment through its smart application dependency mapping feature, but also grants you with granular visibility at the process level, providing forensic analysis capabilities and more. Then we covered the layer defense approach by enabling hypervisor, hardware, and cloud agnostic microsegmentation at the workload level through Tetration and then at the network and layer for layer seven devices layer through ACI. And last, we extended that consistently secure approach all the way to the campus and the one by making the most out of ACI, vManage, and DNA center integrations, which may include multi-factor authentication with Duo for both users and networking consoles like APIC. With all this in mind, the data center can be anywhere your business needs it, enabling faster time to innovation and minimizing downtime as much as possible. By providing software-defined infrastructure, leveraging automation, and unleashing the power of analytics and telemetry, even in a vendor-agnostic approach, we can enable agile, proactive, and secure IT operations anywhere. If you want to learn more about this and other solutions, please watch the rest of the sessions within the Cisco Live On Demand library. Try Intersight or even Cloud ACI yourself today. Or you can also check the Cisco Data Center Made Easy YouTube channel where I regularly post demos, ACI training videos, and other solutions that may also interest you. This is the end of our journey. Thank you for spending time with me. I really hope this was useful to you. I really look forward to seeing you in the next Cisco Live, hopefully in person. Take care.